Autodesk 3DS Max is a professional 3D computer graphics program for making animations, models, games and images. It is commonly used by game developers, TV commercial studios, and architectural visualization studios. In the modding community it is often used for creating mods for all games ranging from Counter-Strike, Gary's Mod to Grand Theft Auto series and other titles. 3DS Max is paid software starting at $300 per year when using the Indie license and features a non-commercial license for students and teachers. Learning a new software can be a daunting process. For that reason this video is split up into several sections to help get you started creating mods. The first time you open up 3DS Max, it is recommended to go through and customize a few things to make it easier to use. This includes setting hotkeys and interfaces. Let's first customize our interface. If you would like to skip ahead please start watching from the timestamp, exploring the application. You may find it useful to press Alt W with a viewport selected. This maximizes the view. Start by right clicking the upper left panel and untick viewport layout tabs. This makes it a little more compact. You may also want to adjust the width of the command panel, as you will be spending a lot of time with this panel. You may want to save to a new workspace by clicking the button in the upper right corner and clicking Manage Workspaces. While you are at the command panel, let's start configuring some modifier shortcuts. These are modifiers that are used a lot in this channel, so having them saved will help you follow along. Unwrap UVW, Vertex Paint, Smooth, Edit Poly, UVW Map, UVW X Form. Next up head into File, Preferences and set your scene undo level to something reasonable such as 100. If decimal precision is important to you, for example if working with maps you may want to set precision anywhere between 5 to 10. The scene unit scale is important to set before working on your next project. If you are working on a pair of glasses you may want to use centimeters, or if working on a house you may want to work in meters. Using centimeters on a city scene may result in accuracy issues. For this YouTube channel meters will mostly be used, which GTA also uses. It is usually best that you set your display units to the same as your system units. In order for GTA tools to work with 3DS Max versions 2018 and above, you will need to change to legacy default settings. To do so head into Customize, Custom Default Switcher, set to Max Legacy and restart the app. Next up you may want to configure your hotkeys. In older versions of 3DS Max, hotkeys may have to be edited from within Customize User Interface menu. When just starting there is only one hotkey worth looking at. Hide Selection. Change this to H. This allows you to quickly hide objects while working with mods. If you use screen recorders, you may want to disable F9 and F8 for main UI. Click Save when done, and then click Done to exit out of the hotkey editor. If you tap out of the application a lot, the alt options at the menus at the top may start bothering you. To prevent the underscores from showing head into Customize User Interface, Menus, Main Menu Bar, edit the menu items and remove the prefix character in their name. When done, save to a new interface configuration file. The most important controls to keep in mind are Q for Selections, W for Select and Move, E for Rotate, R for Scale. With everything set the way you like we can now begin exploring the application. To avoid losing progress on your creations it is always a good idea to save your project. Myself and professionals have lost hours even days of work by not saving regularly. Using the auto backup feature may help, but with larger projects it can slow down your system when saving the backup. For that reason it may be desired to turn off on larger projects. In order to move around the viewport you can hold middle mouse button to pan view. Alt middle mouse button to orbit around. Or use the view cube. Let's start by creating a sphere through the create panel. Click anywhere in your scene and drag to determine the size. If we head into the modify panel, we can start manipulating this sphere. For example, we may want to lower its subdivisions. All primitive objects created from the Create panel can have their subdivision, length, width, height, 
radius, and other parameters changed as long as they are still a primitive object. If converted to a poly mesh, then they lose that ability. 3ds Max allows you to create many other things than just geometrical shapes. This could be text, lines, stairs, and other presets. Back in the Modify panel, let's take a look at how we can modify the sphere on a polygon level. Below the Modifiers list, locate the Edit Poly modifier. If you click the arrow next to the modifier, you will find five different modes. Vertex, Edge, Border, Polygon, Element. If you select Vertex, you will notice small dots appear on top of the sphere's surface. In 3D, a vertex connects edges and polygons to create a mesh. If you press backspace it removes subdivisions from those polygons and in turn makes them look less detailed. If you select a vertex and press delete, you will notice it removes a set of polygons. When selecting a vertex you will notice a gizmo with three axes appear. This gizmo lets you move the vertex in any direction. If you select edge you will not immediately notice anything different. If you press F4 your viewport will display edge faces. If you double click the mid section of the sphere and press delete, you will notice it removes an entire ring of the sphere. If you select border you will notice it has nearly the same functions as edge. Border selection level is for selecting the outskirts of a mesh, or where there is gaps between geometry for example holes. Because we have a gap in our mesh, we can select the bottom gap with ease. If you scroll down on your right side and press cap, you will notice that it repairs the sphere half. Let's do the same with the other half. If you select polygon and click on the bottom half of the sphere surface that you just created you will notice it selects the entire area. This is an n-gon which in simple terms means it's a polygon with more than four edges. If we select a polygon on the side you will notice it only selects one of the small polygons. We can perform actions on it such as extrude inwards, inset, and perhaps extrude outwards. If you select element and click on the top half you will notice it selects the entire top half. This is because when we split the sphere apart, it broke the mid section of the sphere and created two elements. If we were to detach the extruded polygons to element and go back into element mode, you would notice it now being split apart. This is because the part was detached and thus no longer stitched with the sphere. We can resolve this by going into vertex selection mode, pressing Ctrl A, and configure the weld button to something like 0.001. You will notice the number decreasing by 4 because the detachment created an additional 4 vertices. If we now head back into element selection mode and click the top half you will notice it once again selects the entire mesh. It may be worth that you explore the rest of the parameters within the selection modes. With that in mind we'll briefly go over a few other basics. If you press Shift Q it will render your current view. Rendering is used for final production in animation and visualizations. Rather than taking a screenshot of your view, it calculates the lighting and shading and renders that into an image. You will notice it also has alpha channel which is useful if you would like a transparent background. If you save the render as PNG or other formats that support transparency, you will notice it looks correct. If you press M, it will open the Material Editor. A material is a container that stores color information for models. For example, you could add a texture to a material and change its reflection or opacity intensity. The way to look at a material is therefore as a container that stores textures and other display information. If you're not comfortable with node networks, you may want to change from slate to compact mode in your Material Editor. You can reopen projects from File, Open, or Open Recent. If you are someone who works on a lot of projects, it may help to increase the maximum list of recent projects by going into File, Preferences, Files tab and changing the recent files and file menu to something like 25. If you would like to import external files, you can do that from File, Import and locating the file that you would like to import. Exporting is done similarly. In upcoming videos you will learn how GTA plugins work.